The twin rovers Spirit and Opportunity were designed to spend 90 days exploring Mars in search of proof of liquid water. Not only did they accomplish that mission, but they amazingly continued roving the planet for more than three years, providing unprecedented new discoveries about Mars's geology and climate. For their proud father, Stephen Squires, it's the next best thing to being there. The boy who would become Earth's chief virtual explorer on Mars was a born scientist. I don't think I can ever remember not thinking of myself as a scientist. When I was six, year old, when I was six years old, I was a scientist. I just wasn't a very good one. As a native of South Jersey, Steve Squires fondly remembers frequent visits with his computer programmer dad to a certain Philadelphia Science Museum. My brother liked the train, you know, the big locomotive. Um, my favorite thing was the planetarium. And then we all liked that big thumping heart, except my, li my little sister was scared of it when she was really small. A lot of my many good childhood memories are from visits to the Franklin Institute. Exploration was in his bones. In 1974, his way of celebrating high school graduation was joining a geology expedition to Alaska's Juneau ice fields. I got a chance for the first time in my life to actually go to places where, as far as we knew, no human being had ever been before and see things that no one had ever seen. At Cornell University, Squires studied geology. During his junior year, a spectacular mission to Mars changed his life. He signed up for a course on the Viking landers. I remember going into the room where all the pictures of Mars were kept and seeing another world for the first time. I was in that room for four hours and I walked out of there knowing exactly what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. So he switched to planetary science, earning his PhD while working on the Voyager mission to Jupiter. After five years at NASA's Ames Research Center in California, he returned to Cornell, this time as faculty. He was intrigued by hints that Mars once had liquid water, a prerequisite for life. If we could show that life independently took hold on two different worlds, just in our solar system, then if you consider the, the multitude of solar systems out there, it would not take any great leap of imagination or faith to believe that life could actually be commonplace throughout the universe. And that would be a pretty profound conclusion to reach. But how could you prove there was once liquid water if there is none flowing now? Squires dreamed of sending a roving robotic geologist to truly explore the planet. It would scrutinize areas that looked like they were once altered by liquid water, drill into Martian soil and rocks, and use miniature lab instruments to analyze their chemical composition. To do what you would do if you were there on the Martian surface. To be able to look around, take in the scene, find the most interesting stuff, and then go over to it. Learn something from it. Formulate a new question based on what you just learned. Look around. Go someplace new. True exploration. He assembled a team and spent the next decade writing a series of proposals that were rejected by NASA. In 1997, his rover was finally selected, but then canceled following the loss of two other Mars missions. But Squire's team persevered with a new approach. Rather than land their rover on legs like the polar lander that crashed, they took inspiration from the Mars Pathfinder and proposed instead to bounce it to safety on airbags. We took that concept to NASA, and uh, not only did they like it and select it, but they decided, to our utter astonishment, to fly two of them. The team had only 34 months to design, build, and thoroughly test two rovers and prepare them for launch, a seemingly impossible task. But Squire's team pulled it off. Yet, nothing compared to the unforgettable day that Spirit's six wheels rolled safely off the lander onto Martian soil. That was, to me, the most emotionally overwhelming moment, I think, of the entire mission. Uh, that was the moment at which we made the transition from we're trying to get a rover to Mars to, okay, it's time to explore. Both rovers found photographic and mineral evidence confirming that Mars once was a watery and possibly habitable place. If that was not remarkable enough, the rovers lived far beyond their expected 90-day mission. They kept exploring, paving the way for human explorers, 
and inspiring the generation that will set foot on the red planet. Will I go to Mars? In a heartbeat. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, the, the, the first people who go to Mars, they're not my age. They're not astronauts today. They're people who are in middle school or elementary school right now. Those are going to be the people who go to Mars. I just hope to, to live to see it. The 2007 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Earth and Environmental Science is presented to Stephen Squires for the discovery and elucidation of water on Mars through the robotic geologists of the Mars Exploration Rovers. Squires and his team produced fundamental insights into the geology and climatology of Mars. These have resulted in major advances in our understanding of the potential for life on other planets and of life's evolution on Earth. 